So one of the biggest topics you guys ask questions about are bank switches. I thought, right, let's make a call out. I did it on the YouTube community and on my Instagram account. I asked, what are your questions on bank switching? What do you want to know? So we got loads of them came through. I'm gonna try and do my best now to go through as many of them as I possibly can. Uh, and let's kick off with this question from, well, there's two questions here on the same sort of thing. Barrels and Wines asked, will wages switch over? And Hedwig asked, is someone, if someone sends money to your old account in five years time, Will it be redirected to your new account? So, talk so about wages first of all, not just wages, any money in and out, if you're switching via the current account switching service, it's gonna be uh, moved from your old account to your new account. No problem about that at all. And that's not just now when you first do the switch, it's forever, it's indefinitely. If someone sends money to your old account details at any point in the future, that money will reach your new account that you've got. And potentially, it could end up in a series of switches. You've done multiple ones. It could go over here, then over here, then over here, then over here. It will get to you as long as you switch using that current account switching service with the guarantee that comes into play there. Of course, there are certain things, and I say wages are particularly ones to think about here, where you want to kind of absolutely 100% just make sure that the employer, your employer, has got your new details. Because you don't want that last of money Probably the biggest amount of money you've got coming into your account if it's all month to month, just, just get waylaid. Even if it takes a, a few days or something, you don't want that to happen. It shouldn't happen. It rarely happens. It's never happened to me when I've switched. But, you know, just to be safe, I would do that. But broadly speaking, you're going to be absolutely fine. All that stuff's going to be moved over. I do think it's worth just double checking because I have had the only time I've had things not transfer over. A couple of times some direct debits to charities haven't moved. I don't know why that is, but that hasn't happened. So it's always worth just making sure that before you switch, you have a look at all the direct debits. Maybe take a screen grab if you're using your phone uh, or just write them down somewhere on a notepad. All the direct debits are standing orders you have in your old account. And then when the switch is complete, just double check they're all in there. But again, most of the time, it's gonna be no problem at all. It's just a couple of small charity donations uh, which went awry for whatever random reason. But again, I've switched about, I'd God knows, more than a dozen times, okay? So to have one or two things happen to me once, it's very, very rare this will happen. Uh, what else we got next? Okay, so the next lot of questions are kind of probably specific to uh, some actual switching offers. So I won't go into detail on those terms and conditions because these will come and go. They come and change all the time. You might be watching this later on. That offer might not exist and another one might be there. But the things they're asking broadly, there's some good things we can take from this to help us make sure we get the most from the switching deals. So ML asked, first of all, uh, if I switch, do my wages need to go into the switching bank? Uh, so this will depend on the offer. Uh, most of the time, the bank switching deals do require some cash to be deposited into the new account. Now, they don't all require that. Some of them do, some of them don't. When they do ask for that to come through, and you will have to, and this is, I'm going to probably say this quite a few times in this video, you will need to check the terms and conditions of every offer just to make sure you fully understand them, yeah? Because they will be different, they will change. But broadly, when they want that money to go in, it doesn't need to be your salary. In fact, I've never seen a switching offer that says you must pay your salary into this. They just want some money. And also, I've never seen one that says it has to be a lump sum. So let's say it's a grand that's required for this switching offer. That doesn't have to be £1,000 that goes in in a single amount. It often can be uh, multiple amounts of money. So that could well be that you've got two lots of £500 go in and that reaches the magic number of a grand that you need for that particular offer. And that might be two separate lots of 500 that go in. You might not have that. You might only have 250 quid. And just one lot of 250 quid, there's no more 250s coming at any point. But what you could do here is pay 250 pounds into the account, transfer it back out into a separate account, you've got a different account, then transfer it in again, take it out again, and repeat that two more times. In total, 1,000 pounds has been paid into that account, but you haven't necessarily had a thousand pounds in there in total in its entirety. Now again, there will be exceptions to this. The Virgin Money deal, for example, uh, that has often required you to have a grand in the account, in fact, in the separate savings account for a period of, I don't know, let's say 30 days. So read the terms and conditions and see what they say. It may well be that there is, yes, a set amount of time it needs to be, a large amount of cash needs to be in there. But once that period of time's up and you've got the money, often it doesn't matter, okay? So then you can take that money out. It doesn't have to stay in there. Uh, what you do need to think about here is, and actually this kind of leads me on to a next question here from Natalia. It says, are there rules for the new switched account, such as the money deposits and the direct debits? Now, this is something to, to people don't always think about here. Yes, we talk about switching terms and conditions, checking those. Do you need direct debits? Do you need money coming in and so on? How long do they need to be there for to get that switching cash? 
And as I said, once you've got that switch in cash, you can often cancel those direct debits and take all the money out if you don't want them in there. But make sure you also look at the terms and conditions of the account that you've opened, the one that you've just switched into, because that might have some additional things. So for example, uh, the NatWest reward account, for example, that has to have two direct debits paid out of it every single month in order for you to get that monthly reward. The actual switching deal, that might not require, and there's none running right now, but that might not require any direct debits at all, but the account reward itself does. Or Halifax uh, reward and the Club Lloyd's current accounts, they both require 1,500 pounds to be paid into that account every single month. Again, it could be portioned out, it could be three lots of 500 or whatever it might be. But if you don't do that, then you'll get hit with a three pound fee every month for that account. So there are two lots to think about here, the switch in terms and conditions, and then the current account terms and conditions. So make sure you read those and you understand those uh, in order to get not just that cash, but any ongoing benefits or to avoid any ongoing charges. But again, they will be different for every single offer and every single current account. So there's no one size fits all here. Now this next question here, uh, when do my direct debits need to be set up? Is it before or after the switch? Once more, that will depend on the switching offer. Uh, again, some of the current accounts don't switch in deals don't require direct debits at all. Okay, so you don't need to worry about it. But most of them do. A lot of them will say, look, you need to have a couple of direct debits. Sometimes they're offer a standing order, but normally a direct debit in that account. Now, often, in fact, the majority of the time here, you can set up a direct debit in the new current account. It doesn't have to be switched over. It's just that new current account has to have some direct debits in them, okay? And that's relatively easy to do. Just make sure you do it within the time frame that's available to you in order to get that cash. Sometimes though, they will require those direct debits to be active in the old account and switched across. And active has some different definitions depending on what bank you're talking about. Nationwide, for example, says that an active direct debits mean the money has already gone out of those direct debits prior to the switch to their account. Now, if you've already got direct debits in that old account, that's fine, that's not a problem, no issue at all. You just move them over and it's all gonna be fine. If you're trying to set up some direct debits in that old account before switching, then time can be pretty tight for that. But I have got a whole video that I made last year, late last year, looking at some easy direct debits you can set up and create in days. So you've got time to put them in there and it's often the nice thing about these ones are, it's money which is moving from your account into something else you have. Maybe it's into a savings account or whatever it might be. So you're not gonna be losing any money in order to gain some money. So make sure you do understand the difference there. What does the term condition say on that switching offer? Are they active or are they just set up once you open up the new account? Right, I've got a load of questions now on credit scores and bank switching. Again, I have got another video on this that goes into detail. So I won't go into uh, you know, all the details on this here. You can watch the other video if you want after this one uh, and see exactly how that works. But let's go through this. So Ali asks, does bank switching affect your credit score? HZ said, how will switching banks affect your credit? Um, and Gabs87 asks, when a bank account is closed because of the switching, does it negatively impact my credit score? So as I said, a really, really popular question here, hence why I did a video on it before, but I'll, I'll cover the basics right now. So the process of switching itself, that doesn't have an impact, but opening a new current account to switch into, and then if you do a full switch, which requires your old account to be closed, those two things, opening an account and closing an account, could have an impact on your credit report. Uh, very quickly, let's talk about opening your account first of all. The vast majority of current accounts that you're going to open, the exceptions really are Monzo, Starling, uh, and Think Money, will check your credit report, hard check on your credit report um, in order to assess whether they're gonna give you the current account or not. Monzo and Starling will only do that if you apply for an overdraft and Think Money shouldn't check you at all, just do a soft check. Um, but the rest of them, do a hard check and every time your credit file is checked, whether it's for a current account or a mobile phone or a credit card or a mortgage or whatever it might be, that will impact your score a little bit. Now, just opening up one account probably is gonna have very, 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 very little difference. It's gonna be probably be very, very, very short uh, term. Now, if you've got a big application coming on the cards in the next six months, then it's probably like a mortgage or a big loan that's really important to you, then probably important not to open an account. Probably best to leave it until that is all done. Okay, but most of the time that small drop, it's not gonna be much of an issue. So opening an account isn't gonna be uh, much of a concern. It's probably wise not to open too many of them in a short space of time if this is something you're worried about as well. I mean, a credit reference agency say maybe leave it every three months before you do a new application. And remember, not just current accounts, but credit cards, mobile phones, anything where they're gonna charge check your report, just to space out those applications. But 
if you don't have anything major coming along, right, and your credit score is pretty healthy, and you're not worried about this kind of happening to your score in the short term, then you could absolutely apply for as many of them as you want. Doesn't mean you'll get them all, but you can apply for lots of things in a short space of time. I mean, let's face it, when we've moved house, we're often getting new searches on uh, energy and broadband and all these things. So it does kind of happen. We do do this in life and it hardly makes much of a difference. I personally have had applications for current accounts and credit cards uh, within weeks and months of each other, quite a few of them. And yes, my score has gone down as a result, but then it's gone back up later on. Again, that's my personal situation. You need to think very carefully about what that would mean for you. You do not want to be in a situation where it impacts something much more important down the road. So again, you might be better to space them out. Uh, the second thing that we talked about there, that the second question there was about what happens when I close a current account? So again, that switch, when you do it, it will close your old current account if you do a full switch. And most of the cash bonus offers require something called a full switch. There is a partial switch, which just you get to choose which things move over and keeps the uh, old bank account open. But again, you won't get switching deals for that. And a lot of the banks won't let you do this. But anyway, let's say you have closed an old account. This could also have an impact on your credit score. Um, the main thing here is uh, something called longevity. How long you've had any kind of account on your credit report is seen as a sign of stability. You know, credit reference agencies and in theory, therefore lenders, they like longevity. They like to see you've had a, a decent average age of account is pretty long. Now, how long that is, how long is a piece of string? You know, if one's got different lengths and it could well be that you've had something for five years is just as good as something you've had for 20 years. But if you're moving something and you're losing by closing an old account you've had for a long time, then that will also have an impact. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. Think about what's coming along. One way around this, obviously, is to open up a new account and use that for switching. If you've got an old account, keep it. Just even if you're not using it anymore, you can just keep it as an old account Again, for that kind of strength, that power it gives your credit report. And obviously, the longer you have additional accounts, then they also become old accounts. It becomes less of an issue. So you've got an account you've had for five years and one you've had for six years. Well, getting rid of one of those will have an impact, but not as much as if you only had one for five years and one for six months. So there are things to, to consider there. Um, but again, I, I wouldn't worry uh, overly about that unless you have got things coming along. And actually, we've got a question here, uh, two questions here. Organized Pauper said, is bank switching a good idea if your credit rating isn't good? And very similar to this, saving those pots said, do you need to have a good credit score to switch? So my answer really, you know, a lot of the answers to this depends on, on that last one. Uh, you know, opening a new account, closing a new account will have that short-term negative impact. And if you do have a particularly bad credit report for whatever reason, that could obviously impact your ability to open up a new account. Now, you know, current accounts, on the whole, most of them don't have particularly tough criteria. But again, if you have lots and lots of issues going on, history of maybe fraud or bankruptcy or who knows what, then banks might go, no, we don't want to have you as a customer. And they might say no in terms of opening up a new account with them, particularly some of the uh, ones who give you the rewards and give you the bonuses. So there could be an impact there. But what I would say here is that obviously, you know, yes, uh, you want to be careful of rejections. You don't want them to hurt your credit score. But at the same time, there might be other benefits you get by changing your bank. You know, it might not just be about the free cash. It might be about moving to a 0% overdraft and saving yourself a huge amount on debt, which you can get the Nationwide Flex Direct account 12 months at 0%. That could be you know, really, really well worth doing that. You know, again, you will be credit checked for that overdraft, but still, you get my point. These things, it might be worth going for it and giving it a, a go. A question here from far away, Raji. Uh, is there a way to access old statements once I've switched? So sadly not. Most banks, when you go, uh, you're gonna have to contact them to request old bank statements. Some banks I've looked at, they do have an online system, but you have to let them know shortly after leaving that you're gonna want access to this. You know, if you suddenly like four years later go, oh, I need to get this statement, uh, then you might not be able to do that and join those systems. Instead, you'll have to contact the bank and ask them to send it to you. Normally, that is going to be in the post, a paper statement, uh, and they're often going to charge you for that as well. So it, probably a good rule of thumb is you think you're going to need any statements before switching, just uh, take uh, download them from your online banking, whatever it might be, so you've got copies of them stored digitally just in case you do need to access them at a later date. So the boy Wall says, uh, can I switch a new bank just for cash rewards? And once the switch is complete, then close that account. Would that impact any future dealings with that bank? So yeah, broadly, once you've got, unless you know, check the terms and conditions, I keep saying this, keep saying, saying what to do, but broadly, unless it explicitly says you must keep this account open for X amount of time in the terms and conditions, once you've got that cash, you can close that account straight away or use it and switch 
to a different account. Now, if that account is charging you a fee, then absolutely you don't want to use it. You obviously don't want that, but you might better just downgrade it to a free account and have it sitting there. And then it's a handy account you've got ready waiting for another switching offer in the future. It's not doing any harm sitting there being open. That's what I've often done if I'm not using accounts. Why I've got so many current accounts open right now. A lot of them are dead ones, dormant ones I don't use anymore. They're not costing me any money. There's no money going in. There's no money going out. They're just there in case the future I want to kind of take advantage of another promotion which might come along. Uh, in terms of how much that would impact your future relationship with the bank, well, it, it could be that switching away from a, a current account, uh, you might have some linked products with it. So maybe it's a regular saver that's only open to current account customers, or maybe you get a reduction on the fee on the credit card if you're a current account customer. If you no longer have a current account with that bank, obviously you will lose those benefits. So that's something to think about there. Um, it's very rare now, but sometimes mortgages require you to have a current account with that bank as well. So again, you've got to be careful what's going on there. You don't want to sort of jeopardize the mortgage deal you've got. It might be there's a way around that. Again, you can have multiple current accounts with the same bank. A lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time. So maybe you can keep that relationship going just by having an additional account that you've got with them. The only other impact could will be if you do want to apply for something else with that bank in the future. Uh, and if you weren't there very long, they might look at that. They have their own data on you. They can all assess and choose how they assess uh, your applications for anything else, whether that's a different product or whether that is a new current account with them. And actually the likes of Monzo and Starling, there is a period where you can't get a new current account with them having left them. Let alone if you switch, if you close the account, it'd be a while before you can open up a new one. I'm sure many of the other banks have that as well. So if you do think you want to go back to that bank, then do think uh, very, very carefully about switching away from it and closing that account. Similar to that, Frosty Boy Land, another popular question. Do you need to keep an account open for a minimum time and how often can you switch? So in terms of that first part, again, check the terms and conditions. It's probably absolutely fine for you to, uh, as soon as you open an account, if you want to use it to switch, so unless someone says you must have this for a certain amount of time before switching, uh, then you're absolutely fine. So you could open an account today, as soon as you've got it, then switch to another account tomorrow if you wanted to. In terms of how often can you switch, there is no limit. You can keep switching, 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 switching. Just bear in mind what I said earlier on about the impact of your credit score if you are doing multiple uh, opening and closing of accounts in a short space of time. But yeah, I mean, I've switched for all the different offers that I've got right now. I could still switch again, but not necessarily get the offers because there's a certain limit to how many times you can get the cash. Often it's just once. Uh, but yeah, I could keep on switching if I wanted to. And this last question here from Hedwig. Uh, what incentive did HSBC give you to have that link the 175 switch offer on your website and channel? Uh, well, the short answer here, and this is an important one, is nothing at all. And uh, I do not get paid directly by any brand to promote them. I don't do any sponsored content. I don't do any advertising. I do, where possibly, have affiliate links. Because that's great where I've got bills to pay. So if I can recommend something to you guys that is good for you, that I also get some money for, then win-win, right? You get the best product, I get some money. But at a matter of course, I would always tell you what is best for you whether there's a chance I can get paid for it or not. And often, most of the case, particularly these bank switching deals, I get nothing at all for them. Uh, I'll often with the savings accounts as well. I won't get any money for them. So that's a really important one to kind of end with there, I think, is to know that when I'm talking to you, if something was advertised, I'd tell you, but I don't do any adverts at all, okay? It's all absolutely impartial. It's all about the best thing for all of you. Let me know in the comments below your experience with the bank switch. And if you've got any more questions, maybe we could do another one of these videos in the future. My name is Andy Webb. Thanks for watching. Check out these videos on bank switching here for even more information.